Hi, my name is Nicole Naditz, and today I will be taking you through the student work and giving feedback in Google Classroom. So most of you have already posted assignments in Google Classroom, questions in Google Classroom, and possibly also announcements and resources. Today we're going to focus on how to find the work your students are submitting in Google Classroom and what the interface looks like for giving those students feedback. So first of all, where is the work? Well, you have a couple of options for finding it. You can actually click on the question or the assignment as it is listed either in the stream or on the classwork page. So I will show you that right now. Um, if you go to the stream, you can see a header. Um, it's not the full assignment, but then if you actually click on it, it will bring you directly to that assignment. And similarly for a question, it will bring you for the question to the question as well. So that's one way that you can access it. And another way is to simply click on a student's name and people to see a summary of all of the work that is assigned to that student and the status of that work for that particular student. And we will see that at the end of this presentation. When you go to the classwork page and you click on an assignment, you will actually get a quick overview of the status of that assignment for your whole class. How many people have turned it in and how many people have not yet turned it in. But the way Google Classroom defines that is by calling them either turned in or assigned. So if something is assigned, it means that there are 11 people in this case who have not yet completed this assignment, but it is assigned to them. If you would like to see more details, such as who has turned it in and begin giving them feedback, you're going to want to click where it says view assignment. Once you click on view assignment, you get a couple more details. Um, you get the number of people turned in again and to whom it is assigned. You also get on the left a view that shows you first everyone who's turned in. Underneath that is everyone to whom it is assigned. And later, once you have started giving feedback on the left, you will also have the bottom of that list will be everyone to whom it has been returned. And as you'll see in a minute, once you do start giving feedback and returning work to students, the numbers you see here for turned in and assigned will now have a third section called returned. So when you're giving feedback and returning assignments, um, you'll see that first of all, um, you can tell who has turned it in both in the view over here on the right and also in the list on the left. And if you click on it again, you can see how many have done it. And if you click on a name, you can actually open and give feedback if they've provided you with a Google Doc slider sheet. There is still a way to give them a comment, even if they didn't attach a Google Doc to that assignment. Um, and you'll see that in a little bit as well. You'll also notice that you have a grade it is probably set to 100 points, that is the default. So if you did not already adjust that when you created the assignment or the question, you can actually adjust it here. And then if you're ready to return something to them so it no longer shows up as missing in their Google Classroom, you can just click on the empty checkbox next to the student's name and then click on the return button in the upper left hand corner in order to return that to them. And a window will pop up prompting you to um, give a comment if you would like, but that is optional. When students turn in a Google Doc, a Google Sheet or a Google Slides file, there will actually be a thumbnail in that view to show you that they have attached something like that. And that is also clickable. So when you click on it, you can actually see what they have turned in, you can tell it is turned in, and you can add a private comment right here or and return the work to them whenever you are ready. In addition, you can click on the pull down arrow next to the words turned in and you will see a list of your entire class and the status of that assignment for each person and that will allow you to jump to the very next student who has turned it in. Another thing that you can do is you can actually develop a comment bank for the assignment and what you do is you click on those words and it tells you that at this time you have no comments 
but you can add them by clicking on the plus. That brings you to this new screen, which says add comment, and then it tells you you can add multiple comments by starting a new line. So you can type your first comment and hit return. That will add another comment until you have a list a little bit like this. So I just kept hitting return after each one, and then I'm going to hit the blue add button in the lower right corner when I'm done. Once I've done that, I'm going to be able to use that comment bank to assess all of the work in this particular assignment, or I can still add a different private comment if I need to. So if I would like to add something from the comment bank, I'm going to click on this little right facing carrot. That will pull up the comment bank. I'm going to click on the comment that I want to use. That will give me three dots that weren't visible before. When I click on the three dots, that pulls down a drop down menu with some options. I can edit the comment, I can copy it to the clipboard, or I can delete that comment from the comment bank. If I would like to use that comment on this particular student's work, I'm going to choose copy to clipboard. And then I'm going to go um, back to the comments area and paste it, or if I have a different comment to add, I'll just type that comment, and then I need to click post so that the comment is visible. And at that time, I need to return the work to the student. Then I can either pull on this drop down menu that I showed you before, this little down carrot, or I can use the left or right carrots to toggle through each student's work and get to the next student's work who has turned it in and repeat the process of either adding my individual private comments or using the comment bank to copy and then paste a comment in the private comments. At this time, it is not a drag and drop feature, so you can't drag comments from the comment bank into the private comment area, and you also can't just click on them to use them. You have to open the comment bank, copy the comment that you want, go to the private comment area, paste it, and then hit post. Here's another option that I mentioned earlier. You can also just go to the screen that appears when you click to view an assignment, and it takes you to that screen where you can see how many have done it, how many it is still assigned to, and on the left, it has your whole class list sorted by those who have turned it in, those to whom it is assigned, and on the very bottom, those to whom you have already returned it. If you click on the check mark next to your student's name, it'll be all the way on the left, as you saw in an earlier shot, you can then click on the return button and when you do it will actually pop up an opportunity for you to add a private comment at this point. This can be really good if you are returning an assignment that you assigned to them in Google Classroom but that did not require them to turn anything in in Google Classroom. Some teachers use this for example even if they have a workbook or a photocopy page or something from a novel that they want the students to do but they still want to use Google Classroom as the running record of all of the assignments that have been assigned to the student for that term. So when a student hands in a piece of paper for example you can Put your feedback on that if you would like. You can go back to Google Classroom and say, hey, check the returned assignment for your feedback in this private comment area and then click return. And that will remove the missing from their, um, or, uh, from their page. Well, actually, if they turned it in, it's not missing, but that will actually return it back to them so that they know that you have seen it. Um, do train your students as you probably heard in the uh, first part of this, program that you might have attended in person, that um, when a student has an assignment in Google Classroom, if they don't have to attach a Google file of any kind, if it is something from a novel or a textbook or a workbook or a handout that you provided, they need to go into Google Classroom and mark that assignment as done, otherwise it will show up as missing. Um, if you go back to the student list, once you have begun returning student work, you will see that there is now a section I have already referred to a couple of times. It'll be at the bottom of the list on the left called returned. So now on the list on the left, it will be sorted in three sections. Those who have turned it in, but for whom you have not yet provided feedback or returned it. Those to whom it has been assigned, but students have not yet turned it in. And finally at the bottom, those students who have turned in their work 
and for whom you have actually said, yes, I'm giving it back to you now. When you do that, you'll notice that you can also click on the three dots to view any comments you might have provided to the student when you returned the work to them. And once you return something, not only does the list on the left change, but this summary view at the top of that page will also change and it will add a new section with how many students you have returned work to. Lastly, you have in Google Classroom Stream Classwork People. If you click on People, you will get a list of all your students. If you click on the name of a student, you will actually get a screen that looks a little bit like this, and it provides a summary of all of the work that has been assigned to them in Google Classroom, whether it was a question or an assignment. Note that on the right, you will see the status of that work for that particular student. Remember that assigned means that they have not yet turned it in or at the very least, they did not go into classroom and mark it as done. On the left, you have filters that you can use to sort that list because as the year goes on, it will get quite a bit longer. So you can actually choose to only look at what this student has turned in, only look at what you have returned with a grade, or only look at what is still missing for that particular student. So that's a very helpful feature of the new Google Classroom. Thanks again for watching and I hope you have found this helpful.